honey, it's the 31st, time for your monthly video. Is Wayland ready for the Linux desktop? Or to be more precise, I should ask, is the Linux desktop ready for Wayland? I recently came across this video by Nick from the Linux Experiment discussing Nate Graham's response to the infamous Wayland Breaks Everything blog post written by ProBonoPD. ProBonoPD is one of the lead developers of AppImage and is well known for his anti-Wayland views. Nate Graham, on the other hand, is a KDE developer who has, presumably, put a lot of work into making KDE work on Wayland. So let's go through Brody's video, because that's the one that I largely have a problem with. Look, I'm not going to go through and refute every single one of these points, because that would just be kind of tedious, but I'll touch on a few key points. Wayland breaks screen sharing applications. Once again, no. We have a solution nowadays. It is Portal and Pipewire. It is up to the applications to update to support this solution. I'll get back to this later. As a stopgap, there is also x and Video Bridge that basically fakes a solution that fixes every application. Yeah, I'm sure new Linux users will have no problem with installing some additional application in order to get things working that would have worked fine in the past. No problems with that whatsoever. That was sarcasm, by the way. Wayland complicates server-side window decorations. Wrong. GNOME complicates server-side window decorations. Everybody else supports the protocol. Wayland breaks DRM leasing. No. GNOME breaks DRM leasing. Everybody else supports the protocol. Deflecting the issue to GNOME does not address the point of Pro Bono PD's post. The fact that GNOME can break these things is inherently a Wayland problem. They work fine on GNOME on X11, so why not Wayland? Well, the answer is that Wayland requires these additional implementations from these things, and if it's not implemented, then that's a regression. Plain and simple. And now, we have a new project from Probono. That being Wayland X11 Compat Protocols. It's a mess of a name, the name is working and they're possibly going to change it, but this is a repo for the missing Wayland protocols for features that are available in X11 but are denied by the official Wayland protocols. This is a third-party protocol repo trying to address the gaps in Wayland. Yeah, how dare this person try to fix the problem? They should just be complaining about it on the internet and earning ad revenue while doing so. That's clearly the more productive solution. Good luck getting rid of DBus and Pipewire and Portals are the solution to so many problems on Wayland. Problems that didn't exist on X11. And flat packs, and are basically just going to be a requirement going forward, and every distro that you actually want to use just installs them. And that's the point. This is a problem. Modern operating systems are so complicated because they have layers of abstractions on top of abstractions on top of abstractions that make it very difficult to do tasks that should be simple. And to deal with this problem, people just build another layer of abstractions on top to try to fix it, and it just keeps going and going and going. It shouldn't be this way, and it doesn't have to be. Wayland breaks screen recording. This is not true, and hasn't been true for years. Now there are certain applications that don't support the solution, that being Pipewire and Portals, and he even acknowledges Pipewire and Portals. This is known to be a Red Hat slash Flatpak centric, Gnome centric, perhaps worked with other desktops. No, it works with every desktop, because Portals are a requirement for Wayland nowadays. So, does screen recording work on Wayland? Let's see. I don't know. Doesn't look like it works to me. Look, Brody, I appreciate you trying to call out people spreading false information in the community, but if you're going to do that, at the very least, the bare minimum that you should do before doing so is checking that the information they're spreading is actually false. Don't you think so? Now, I will admit, I have an NVIDIA GPU, which isn't ideal since the proprietary NVIDIA drivers don't support Wayland very well, but it's a GTX 1060. It's not some fancy cutting-edge RTX 4000 Titan Super Ti card. It's a card from like five years ago, it should work fine at this point. And as a side note, I don't know why people keep recommending the 545 driver. It's clearly marked as a beta. Telling users to use beta software to fix their issues is just ridiculous. 
I mean, you saw the issues that I have with my Plasma 5 setup. Should I switch to Plasma 6 Alpha? No, no one would seriously suggest that. And yet for drivers, for some reason, that's the accepted advice. With people like Nick actually bashing Zorin OS for shipping the stable 535 driver. You are also stuck at the NVIDIA drivers 535, so not 545, the latest ones that fix a lot of Wayland related issues. And same for NVIDIA, if you actually want to use NVIDIA on Wayland, Zorin OS is not suitable because it doesn't have access to the versions of the drivers that actually fix the related issues. Okay, bashing might be a strong word, but I don't think it's a fair criticism. 535 is the latest stable driver. That's the driver that NVIDIA suggests that people use. Now, back to Nick's video about the blog post. The apt comparison used in Nate's blog post is Linux breaks Photoshop, which obviously no one thinks like that. We all know it's a problem of Adobe not porting Photoshop to Linux. Same goes for Wayland, developers need to port their apps. Wayland is not a drop-in replacement for X11, and it was never intended to be that. I take issue with this comparison to Photoshop. Nate Graham uses this example that, if someone says, Linux breaks Photoshop so you should keep using Windows, the response would be, well wait a minute, the problem is that Photoshop doesn't support Linux. But I don't think that's a fair comparison. Apps had certain functionality that you could rely on to work on X11, and now suddenly that functionality just doesn't work anymore. This isn't a matter of it never being supported, it's a matter of it being supported on one platform and then the system switching to another platform where it isn't. Now of course it's up to the apps to update, but that doesn't change the fact that for the user, that's a regression. They used to have a feature, and now that feature no longer works. Or the app used to work, and then it just doesn't work at all on the new platform. I'm well aware that Wayland isn't a drop-in replacement for X11. And Nate Graham actually goes over this in his blog post, that it's not a drop-in replacement any more than Linux is designed as a drop-in replacement for Windows. The problem is that when you frame it this way, Wayland is an entirely new platform. And when you think of it that way, as opposed to just some under-the-hood upgrade like Pipewire, that was very successful, by the way, it becomes a problem of actually getting apps to update to the new system and to develop all this infrastructure that surrounds it. And until that happens, it's just a worse experience. Quote, Expectations need to be adjusted to reflect the fact that some changes might be required when transitioning from one to the other. Yeah, I think users can generally expect their apps to work. When it works on their system before an update, and after an update it stops working, that's a very basic expectation that is not being met. And this bothers me because I don't think this is helpful for the Linux community. I'm sure you've seen this clip of Linus complaining about how user space keeps breaking their APIs. So, every other day, some ABI breaks, right? So you actually want to just compile one binary and have it work. Preferably forever and preferably across all the Linux distributions. And uh, I actually think distributions have done a horribly, horribly bad job. While on the kernel, the golden rule is that you don't break user space. We have one rule in the kernel. There is one rule. We don't break user space. Everything else is kind of a guideline. The whole security thing, it's a guideline that we shouldn't do stupid shit, right? But that's not a hard rule. People do stupid shit all the time. I don't get that upset. People break user space. I get really, really angry. I think Wayland is just another example of user space developers just not caring enough about compatibility with existing software. That's not to say that we don't eventually want all the software that works right now on X11 to be updated to work on Wayland. But if you want to make the switch before that happens, you have to acknowledge that a lot of software will just not be usable for a while. Is that really what users want? I'm not so sure. They update glibc and everything breaks. You, hey, you can recompile everything, right? That really seems to be this mindset quite often. It's like... In particular, people like Brody. Exhibit A. 
it is up to the applications to update to support this solution. And exhibit B. Now, obviously, all of this work from the app image dev is looking at things from the wrong end of the telescope. They're thinking in terms of Wayland breaks everything instead of realizing that it is apps that need to support the new Wayland protocols. Now, in this clip, Linus is complaining about software having to be recompiled for a new glibc version. And he says that that's a problem for the Linux desktop. But what about Wayland? Well, on Wayland, it's not just recompiling for something new. It's a complete rewrite of the application. Now, there was a post a while ago about how the way that Wayland does a certain kind of graphics rendering is incompatible with the way that certain game engines work. And if I remember correctly, the response was basically something along the lines of just rewrite them to work that way because that's the correct way that it should be done. Okay, so you're saying that in order for a game to work on Wayland, let's just take some random engine, I don't know, Unreal Engine. You're saying that Unreal Engine would have to be rewritten to use that specific way of rendering and then game developers would need to take their games and port it to the new version of the engine. Which, by the way, is not a simple recompile, right? It's a new engine version, it's going to have a whole bunch of new features and things are going to be changed, things are going to be working differently, and that's going to be a very big project. And that's going to happen for every single game that exists on that engine. And then it's going to have to be distributed by them. That's just not going to happen. It's not as simple as just hitting recompile, which Linus himself says even that much is already a problem. And now you're saying that, okay, instead of that, it has to be like a hundred times more work. How is that acceptable? It just isn't. But it's really sad when the most core library in the whole system is okay with breaking stuff. Uh, and, and as long as things improve and they fix the ABI. Even though Wayland certainly has technical advantages, for the average user, it seems like many people are just willing to ignore the problems that exist on Wayland right now. Now, to be clear, I don't hate Wayland. I think it is the future of the graphical desktop on Linux. Many people have contributed a lot of work to get Wayland to where it is today. And I don't have any issues with the people involved in this situation either, whether that's Nate Graham, uh, Brody, Brody Robertson, Nick from the Linux experiment, or really anyone else in this debate. I've filed my fair share of bugs on the KDE tracker, and Nate Graham has been probably the single person who has responded to them the most, helping to triage the bugs, reproduce the issues, and just helping out. I really appreciate the work that he's done for KDE, and I have nothing but respect for the guy. YouTubers, on the other hand, what I take issue with is the way that some people within the Linux community seem to turn a blind eye to the very real issues present on Wayland right now. A few months ago, I made a video about how 2024 will be the year of Wayland on the Linux desktop. In that video, the reasoning for why Wayland would take over was never due to its user experience, but that it had gained enough traction that major distros were, and still are, planning to switch to it by default. And further than that, some of them are ditching X11 entirely. What I want to avoid is a situation like Ubuntu 17.0, where they shipped Wayland as the default, and it had so many issues that users just had a much poorer experience than if they had shipped X11. And because of that, they had to revert to X11 for the next Ubuntu 18.04 release. While Wayland has certainly made tremendous progress since 2017, I still don't believe that it's ready for the average user. I want Wayland and the broader idea of Linux on the desktop to succeed, and pushing this on users before it's ready will only harm this community's reputation. Let's use an analogy. Suppose someone recommends that a beginner Linux user installs Arch. They say something like, oh, it's super easy, only an idiot would break their system. And then inevitably the newbie does something wrong and breaks their system. Since they're told that Arch is super easy to use, they get the impression that all desktop distributions require the same level of technical expertise as Arch. And because of that, they just go back to Windows, or go back to macOS, or go back to whatever, and they stop using Linux. We've just lost a user that otherwise would have had a much better experience with the distro that works better out of the box. And as a community, we don't do this anymore. This kind of elitist attitude about distributions is now frowned upon. 
right? We acknowledge the fact that some distributions are better suited for beginners than others. And that even in general, Linux on the desktop isn't ideal for everyone in every use case. There are some use cases that require additional effort on Linux that just isn't required on other operating systems. Misleading potential users about what they can expect after switching is just not helpful for anyone. And we've become a better community for it. We have more users that are happier with their experience. So what does this have to do with Wayland? Well, it seems to me that many of the, and I hate to use this term, Linux influencers, unfortunately have this same mentality when it comes to Wayland versus X11. We need to acknowledge the fact that Wayland still has a way to go before it gets to full feature parity with X11. When it comes to desktop environments and distributions and all the apps that people have come to rely on supporting it. So let's take a step back and consider whether pushing Wayland is the right approach. And if it is, to be honest about its shortcomings. That's going to be it for me. X11 shill, out. That's my real machine.